Okay guys, in this video we are going to focus on instantiating random objects into our scene on mouse clicks and we are going to create a physics material for our objects as well. Now first of all I do want to quickly go over what we completed in our previous video so if I just click on the play button here we can see the progress that we have made so far. So we do have the camera orbiting around our center point which is actually this platform here and if I click we are instantiating some objects. So if I actually hold down, we're instantiating a whole bunch of objects very quickly. Okay, cool. Now I will be sure to link to the previous video and the playlist in the description of this video below just in case you all want to check out the other previous videos or other videos within this playlist. Now we need to get down to business. We're going to start by creating a new C Sharp script named Random Spawner. So let's go into our scripts folder. We're going to right click create C sharp script and we're just going to name it random spawner. Okay, let's go ahead and open this guy up. Just going to drag it over here. Again, I hope that's big enough for everyone to see. If not, please let me know in the comments and I can play with setting it up a little bit differently. Okay, so the first thing we're actually going to do inside of this script is get rid of our start function. Again, we're not going to need it for this script. We are going to need some public variables though, so we're going to set up a public game object array. We're going to call that spawnees. We're going to need a public transform spawn position. Okay, and we're also going to need an int, and we're just going to call this random int. Okay, now instead of uh, just going through the same instantiation logic within our update function, I'm actually going to create a new function, but we can just go ahead and do our if statement. Inside of this, we're going to say if input dot get mouse button down zero, which again stands for the left mouse button. And inside of this, we're just going to call some function. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our new function. Now let me just add a few spaces down here. And for this function, I'm just gonna call it void spawn random. Okay, very cool. Let me add a few more spaces. There we go. Now the first thing we wanna do inside of our spawn random function is actually get a random integer. In order to do that, we're going to say random int is equal to random dot range, and we're going to go from zero comma spawnees, so our game object array dot length, which will basically give us an, a count of the objects within that array. The next thing we want to actually do, or the last thing we want to actually do within this function, is instantiate. So we're just going to instantiate spawnies uh, make sure that we do the random int so we are gonna make sure that we're spawning the game object that is at this point so random ints point within our game object array and we're just gonna for position we're gonna say spawn position dot position and spawn position dot rotation okay very cool now we need to make sure to actually call this function. So all we have to do is that right there. And that does it for this script. Very cool stuff. Very simple, very easy to do. So now we're actually going to go back up to our, whoop, looks like we've got a error here. Let's check and see what's going on. Oh, forgot a semicolon. Don't forget those semicolons. They are very important. There we go. Cleared it right up. Now the next thing we actually want to do is create some prefabs, uh, some some new prefabs, because if we don't, we can't really tell that it's working. So we're going to go back to our materials. And we're just going to create a few more materials here. So just again, right click, create material, and we'll just call this blue mat, and we're just going to change the albedo color here to a blue. Let's go with a darker blue. All right, now let's go with a red. Uh, there we go. Oops. Change the name of that to red mat. 
And we'll do two more, so let's do a yellow. And we're going to change that color. Not really that yellow, there we go. And let's go with a black. So we'll go create material, and we'll just call this one black matte. Okay, now, again, just going to change the color to black here. Okay, so now we've got these other materials set up, and we need to add some more prefabs in order to actually add these to our script. So what we're going to do very quickly is just add some spheres. Actually, if we go, let's make sure we set them up with the correct uh, dimensions. So if I just check my dimensions, okay, cool. So it's all one by one. So let's create 3D object sphere. And if I just zero this guy out really quickly, now we can just very easily duplicate. Okay. Now all we need to do is drag our materials on. So let's change that. We're going to go black, blue, whoops, yellow, and red. Okay, the, the last thing we actually need to do here is add a rigid body. So if we select all of these at the same time, add component, and say rigid body. And that should do it. Now what we need to do is actually create prefabs of these. So if we go into our prefabs folder and just drag all of these in. I'm not going to rename them, but oops, it didn't let me drag all of them in. I guess i got to drag them in one at a time here. Okay, cool. So now we've got several different colored spheres that we can actually spawn into our scene. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these guys from our scene. And if we go up to our main camera, we need to actually remove our spawner script. I'm just going to uncheck it and we're just going to add component and we're going to call random spawner here. And now we just need to add these guys. Actually, let's do it this way. We'll lock on the main camera here and if we just drag all of these into spawnies now we've got these five game objects within our game object array and we also need to set our spawn position so we can drag that in and that's all we have to do so now we can actually test so let's press the play button here and we're rotating if I click we got a yellow we got a blue a red 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 <laughs> Give me something to do. Uh-oh. They're all stacking. Give it a second. They'll start dying pretty soon. Actually, they won't because they're not... Uh, I forgot to do something. Very important. So if we go back and look at our original sphere, and let me unlock this, we can see that this has the destroyer script on it. Very important. So what we need to do is actually go back and to each of these guys, we need to add component, destroyer, Okay, and let's just drop the lifetime down on these. So we're going to drop lifetime down to five. And we're going to press play again. Now, there we go. Now they're sort of getting destroyed a little more quickly. Kind of Christmas colored there. So the last thing I actually want to cover within this tutorial is creating some physics materials. And I want to do that because right now the balls are not behaving, you know, according to any physics we know, um, unless they were magnetic and they're just sort of sticking to each other. But, you know, I really want these to be more of like a bouncy ball. So we need to create a material, a physics material for that. But first we need to create a new folder. So let's create folder. And we're just going to call this one physics materials. And let's go inside of this. And to create a physics physics material all we have to do is right click create and physics material there we go and let's just call this ball okay I'm not gonna go into all of the settings here I can if we get some requests for that but I'm just gonna go through and set some values here that I've played with before so for our dynamic friction we're gonna set it to 0.25 for our static friction I'm gonna set that to 0.25 and for our bounciness I'm gonna set that to 0.75 now, the max value that you can have for your like bounciness is one. Static friction can go higher than that. But again, I'm not going to 
go into what these values are doing or anything like that. I just want to show you, um, you know, how these work uh, on really simple objects. So now that we've got that new physics material, what we need to do is actually go back out to our prefabs. And again, I'm just going to select all of them. Physics material, let's add our ball here. Very cool. Now let's press play. And now we should see the balls actually bouncing around and, you know, doing uh, some more physics type behavior. They're still sticking to each other pretty, pretty heavily, which isn't really all that cool, but that's okay. We might have the friction set a little high. So let's actually try removing the friction on our physics material and see what happens. So let's drop that down to zero. Let's see what that does. Okay, now let's... They're still not shooting out from one another. Okay, let's play with the bounciness to see what that does. So one thing I did want to actually point out is that you may notice that now I am instantiating each time I click. So when I click, a new one comes in. So that's actually easy to change as well. If I go back to my script here, I can change to get mouse button. And now if I press play, we're going to instantiate a whole bunch really quickly. So there we go. Now, I honestly think this looks a little better, but it may be a little heavier for computers. You know, if you don't have a pretty high-powered computer, it may not be able to handle this, but it's definitely way cooler to look at, you know, just a bunch of, you know, bouncy balls just flying all over the place. So if I hold down, you can see just tons of them. Very cool stuff. Very fun project. Okay, so that looks even better now. It's, you know, a lot of fun to go through and do these, you know, very quick sort of tutorials covering, you know, different types of scripts than you typically see. But that's going to do it for this video. Again, it was a fairly short video, but it does add a little more functionality to our scripting series here. And we're going to keep building on top of it as well. In our next video, we are actually going to make our camera change targets smoothly transitioning between the instantiated objects. So right now, our camera is focused on this platform here. The behavior that I want the camera to have is to look at the first instantiated object and then move to different instantiated objects uh, either over time or when one uh, runs out of lifetime or is destroyed will look to a different one. Another thing that you may have noticed and I can actually show you again before ending this video is that when we instantiate a lot of these right there's they're moving out in almost a straight line to the uh, to the left and right and that is actually occurring because of the way we're instantiating these objects. So we're always doing the same rotation, the same position on these objects. And what we need to do to actually change that is randomize the position and the rotation and even start to instantiate them in drastically different positions. So we're going to dive into some of that in some later tutorials. But that's going to do it for this tutorial. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.